Hey everyone, so by the title of this video, you can probably guess what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, but I wanted to talk about some historical fiction books that I have never mentioned on my channel before and that I don't really see a ton of people talking about or at all on booktube. Um, but when I think of historical fiction, I think of like the fall, like after Halloween, so like November and into winter basically is like historical fiction time for me. I don't know if anyone else is like that. I know a lot of people read in seasons, like um, if I'm going to read contemporary, usually I read those in the summer. Um, and I do read like horror or scary books year round, but I focus a lot of them on like during the fall. So to me, historical fiction is just good for late in the fall and through the winter. So the first book that I wanna talk about is Euphoria by Lily King. Um, there's not much to this book to really say, but basically it takes place in the 1930s and it is about Margaret Mead, the anthropologist, and we follow her on one of her trips, explorations, whatever you wanna call them. Um, but it is about her getting swept up in a love triangle and how this love triangle threatens uh, her career and it also becomes very dangerous. Um, I thought this was a really interesting read. I have a degree in anthropology, so I was maybe drawn to this a little more than some other people. But this is covering their trip to New Guinea. So she goes there with fellow anthropologists and other people and they're just studying the people of New Guinea. So we get to see like the aspects of that, but it is mostly focused on the relationships that happen and the personal aspects of what's going on. The next book I want to mention is Mrs. Poe by Lynn Cullen. This is the story of Edgar Allan Poe and Francis Osgood. Basically, after he writes The Raven, he is super popular. All the ladies love Mr. Poe. Um, and she goes and she meets him and they kind of start this like affair. But at the time, Poe is married. So Francis Osgood is trying to, of course, be secretive about this. Tries to, um, basically the Mrs. Poe, Poe's wife at the time, tries to befriend her. So she's trying to keep up this front that you know, she's friends with his wife, but they're having this affair and it becomes dangerous. Um, I love Poe. You probably know that if you've watched my channel. So this was a really fun read. The next book is Miss Emily by Nuala O'Connor. In this book, it is a story about Emily Dickinson. Um, there is a young girl, Ada, who she's from Ireland and she goes to live with the Dickinson family as like a maid. And at the time, Emily is in her 30s, mid 30s. And she's at the point in her life where she is writing and she's shutting herself off from the rest of the world. She's just like all consumed in this. Um, but Ada comes over from Ireland and she's trying to find her place in life and adjusting to all the changes. Um, eventually, as we progress in the story, things start to happen and Ada is actually in trouble. And this causes Emily to possibly have to leave the house and not be a recluse and save Ada, who has become one of her closest, if only, friends, even though she's like this young servant girl and there's like a difference in their standing and a big difference in their age. They become really close and um, her her feelings for Ada and her friendship push makes her, um, you know, push her boundaries. This is a quick read. Like, it's it was really entertaining. I really enjoyed it. Um, and of course, if you're a fan of Emily Dickinson, you should totally pick it up. It's a fun read. The next book I want to talk about is The Widow of the South by Robert Hicks. This is actually based on a true story. So it takes place in 1864, right after the Battle of Franklin, which is thought to be some of the worst or bloodiest or most violent few hours of the Civil War. Um, but during this time, Carrie... Uh, has like a plantation or or like a lot of land and basically her house becomes a makeshift hospital for all these confederate soldiers and that is or was the norm then uh, 
fighting that type of war in your home country. You know, people gave up their land. They uh, let soldiers into their home. And I, I don't think it really mattered what uh, soldier it was, whether it was Northern or Southern soldier. Um, it was kind of just make do with what you had and they were they were everywhere. <laughs> um, so basically she's trying to help these injured and sick soldiers there. Um, she has a few of them that are just dying on her porch, but and then basically um, another soldier shows up, he's injured and he like awakens feelings in her that she didn't know she had or that she had forgotten. Um, but this was a really interesting read. You don't think about um, war in this sense anymore, especially um, if you live in America or in a modernized world um, or in a first world, I guess you could say. Um, a lot of us don't experience war firsthand. Um, in America, our soldiers are away. Um, we, we don't see it like some other countries do and like reading this and just thinking like, oh, one day you're sitting out on your porch and the next day it's a hospital. Um, so it was just really interesting and based on true events. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this one. It was like a, it was a tough read, not in a, not in a bad way. Like it wasn't a bad, but it was just, it really, really made you think about violence and just how thankful I am for running water and Purell. That Purell's great too. The next book is 1000 White Women, The Journals of May Dodd by Jim Fergus. Um, this is based on a historical event or time, um, like a true thing, um, but it's told through fictional journals. Um, so that's really interesting. But basically we're following May Dodd, who unfortunately is in love with a man below her station. And this just becomes super tumultuous and ends up getting her put into an insane asylum. Uh, the only way that she is allowed to be released is that she decides um, that she will participate in like this secret government um, program experiment I guess you could say but basically the government sends 1,000 white women out to marry Cheyenne Indian warriors the whole idea pretty much I think is like you're sending women from the civilized world or you're sending civilized women to go like civilize the Indians like look we know it's wrong like obviously there's a problem with this but this is just the story of what happened so she marries a Cheyenne warrior, but she's also now in love with an army captain. And so now May is caught between basically loving two men, you know, like being forced into this marriage, like falling for him, getting feelings for him, also being interested in wanting this army captain. And she's also stuck in these two worlds. Like she, it's kind of like, <laughs> oh, they're not so different than us kind of story. Um, she is a part of this tribe when she marries these men. She is spending time with the women there, spending time with the children there. Like she lives there. She is now a part of them. And it gets to the point where she is just stuck between, between these two worlds and what is right. Why are they, tr why are, why are we treating them differently? Like, those are the kinds of things that this woman goes through and experiences. Um, and like I said, it's based on a historical event, but um, in 1875, I don't know if I said that, um, but it's told through like the fictional journals, which was really cool. The next book and the last book that I want to talk about is Emily's Ghost, a novel of the Bronte sisters by Denise Giardina. Um, this one is basically just a reimagining of their life. It just really focuses on um, them. It's like a fictional telling of their life. It focuses on their relationships. It focuses on the men in their lives. 
Um, it was it was good. I don't have much to say about this one other than that. Um, one of the blurbs kind of talks about like we already know the sisters, we know the landscape, we know the setting, and this is just a love story surrounding all of those things. So if you are a Bronte fan, I would highly recommend this one. Of course, there's heavy um, concentration on Emily, but I'm not complaining because I love Emily. So those are all the books that I am going to mention today. I just wanted to talk about some that I don't think I've ever mentioned on my channel at all. And I, I really feel that historical fiction is like a good fall winter read so yeah let me know if you've read any of these or if you have any historical fiction suggestions of course I'm always up for suggestions so let me know thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video